What's up everybody? I'm Morgan Crosby. Welcome to Cars and Crosby. I have another awesome update video for you on all the things that I have had going on and what is also going to be going on in the future. We are finally back at Fid Chevrolet. This is where I work. This is the Corvette facility uh, that we have designated for all of our Corvette sales. So this is where you will be getting your Corvette washed uh, and getting ready for detail after it comes off the truck and we do that delivery inspection with Phil which is over there. Um, I'm washing off my Corvette for the first time back in the bay. Um, it's very nice to have all the correct uh, equipment that we need to have to get this thing looking perfect for your special day. Um, so right now I've just completely got all the dirt off the vet. Um, I am going to be drying it off and then I'm going to be applying a wax on top of that ceramic coating that we already applied earlier in a couple of videos um, at the very beginning when I first got it. So uh, that's what's going on with my vet right now. I do have some cool things that I am working on right now to do to my Corvette. The two things that I am going to be doing in the near future once I get everything set up and organized is we are going to be doing a suspension modification where we drop it down. I have the E60 option where you can um, have the Corvette front end lift. Uh, so the front end lift option or the code is E60. Um, because it has this option, it makes it so that I cannot uh, lower the knuckles in the rear end or the front end, uh, allowing it to drop about an inch. Uh, if you have a Z51 model, you will be able to do that if you don't have the front lift. I have the front lift. We're going to be going over the, the, um, the GM side of it on what it's going to take for me to be able to pass a GM warranty and then also from the aftermarket side. So that's a very big thing for me. I don't want to do anything in terms of modifications that can't be reversed and also that are not condoned by General Motors. I want to play by the rules. I know that there are fast shortcuts that you could be doing, but let's not try to do that. This is something that I want to keep and own for a very long time or pass it on to somebody and making sure that it is in the best condition possible. And so to do that, I want to make sure uh, as this is going to be some of the first people coming out there with uh, modifications that it's the right one to do. And on that topic, that brings me to the second one, which is the exhaust. The exhaust on my Corvette right now is amazing. I love the amount of um, variations that you can have in the exhaust tone. But when it comes to the sound coming into the chamber, I don't have the same experience that I had in a previous generation C7. And so I'm gonna be looking at trying to do a tasteful upgrade to that as well. There are a couple manufacturers that I'm waiting to see what they come out with. And that goes back to what I was just saying in that I do not wanna rush into this just because one tuning company or an engineering firm comes out with a product. It doesn't always mean it's the best. There's plenty of time to enjoy this Corvette while it's still stock. And it's not something that I'm just running out of the gates to try to do with the first manufacturer. So um, I want to make sure that when we go through this, I'm looking at the GM side of it. And then I'm also looking at what it is that I'm going to enjoy out of it in terms of sound. So um, that's a quick little update. I'm going to dry off this Corvette and then we're going to apply some wax. And I'll give you some more updates on what we're doing. All right. I just finished washing off the Corvette. I dried it off with the synthetic chamois, which we have here at the... Uh, shop. Um, I've already got it posted up here because I am going to be power washing it. I always power wash a chamois before and after I use it just to get any impurities that I may have missed while I was washing the Corvette off of there so that it's not passing it on to the next one. And I also have some tools here that are essential that I can't really get done at home. Um, the first is that we have uh, an air hose throughout the dealership and that's going to be really helpful for when I want to get into crevices. I mentioned it in a previous video how there's a lot more intricate crevices on the Corvette and having an air hose is really going to help out with me getting stuff out and then getting it taken care of with the chamois. Now, um, if I was going to be applying wax and this Corvette was a little bit older, it had a little bit more use on it and it was exposed to the elements, what I would be doing before I applied the wax and after I've washed it is I would be claying the Corvette. And that's what these two things right here are. These are different intensities. One is a light and one is a medium. And based on how much fallout has happened on this Corvette, I would first clay the Corvette because I don't want to be sealing any of that impurities that may be embedded into the paint. One of the biggest ones on a white one that you'll see are brake fast, brake dust filings and fallout. And you'll see almost like little white, little rust, or sorry, rust spots. That's something that you want to get out on a white car. And then in a black car, um, you could see a lot different kinds of stuff. Maybe some tree sap that will kind of uh, glaze over a bit. So each color has their different um, discrepancies and, and downfalls, but regardless, whatever color it is, you will need to be clay barring it before you apply wax if it is getting a little bit uh, exposed to the elements. So that's the next step. Like always in my videos when I wash the Corvette, I'm just going to open up the rear trunk to see how much water is in it this time. Quite a bit of work to do.
So um, I'm going to be getting this dried off and then we'll talk a little bit more about those modifications that I have going on in my Corvette. Okay, so I have finished drying off the Corvette to my standards. Again, we're using an air hose to get all the little crevices and everything taken care of because after that we are going to be applying a wax. This is the, the device that we use to apply the wax here. And as you can see, if you get water onto this pad, it's not going to allow you to apply the wax in an even manner. When we're putting this wax on, we obviously want it to be a consistent level of wax all the way throughout the vehicle. And in order to do that, you can't have any water on it. So that is the big reason why we're wanting to get all the water off. If we were claying it after we washed it, then we would make sure that we had all the residue off because we are going to be using um, a lubricant, like a wax-based lubricant when you are applying the wax, or sorry, the clay bar. Um, I want to touch a little bit more upon what I was talking about with lowering the suspension, keeping in mind that this is because it has the front lift that I have this issue. If you are looking at dropping the suspension, you can do so with relative ease at any GM qualified dealership. It's about three hours worth of work. And one of those hours is going to be applying a full um, alignment to the Corvette because after you've modified the suspension, you really do need to make sure that everything is lined up, ready to go. Uh, your cambers and everything have not been adjusted. And so that is uh, crucial for making sure that you're not going to wear, uh, wear out your tires in an uneven manner. If you do not get an alignment, we cannot promise that the tire is going to wear in an even manner and you may run into some issues. So just keep that in the back of your mind for the non-lift people. Um, if you do have a lift though, this is the conundrum that I'm in right now. I am in the process of trying to lower it and there is not the way to do it when it has the front lift. There is a company called Sisio. Uh, they have made a performance product based out of Georgia. Uh, they have a collar that they say that you can allow it to drop one inch. I am in the process of learning more about this product as it is so far the front runner in the companies that have come out with allowing us to lower it. On behalf of General Motors, I am still waiting for a couple more responses before I make my final conclusions on if I'm going to do this, keeping in mind that I want to make sure that both parties are happy. Um, in the exhaust note, one of the biggest things that I am really, really uh, apprehensive and reserved about at this time is that there is an absolutely amazing amount of engineering that went into heat shielding the exhaust system. If you were to see a cutaway of the exhaust system, you will see that there are a number of methods that they use to heat shield the Corvette. And also because this is the storage compartment, if I am gonna be modifying the exhaust and I am gonna be taking some of the heat shielding away, that might make some massive sacrifices in terms of the, the thermal management that goes on in the Corvette. So keep in mind, these are all things that are going on right now. I have not made any final decisions. If you have any suggestions, please, please, please mention it in the comment section. I wanna get as much suggestions as possible on what type of tasteful upgrades you would like to see. I have another couple that I am gonna be doing. I just haven't really mentioned them because they're not that big of an item, uh, but smoking out some of the lighting on the Corvette may be an option that I'm gonna be doing as well. So uh, I appreciate you guys all following along on this adventure that I'm having. If there's any suggestions or concerns or comments, don't hesitate to do that, as well as subscribing and hitting the bell notification. I'm Morgan Crosby. Thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for more.